Hello, my name is Sip Mendez. Welcome to Sip's Wood Chips. And for quite a while now, I've been wanting to do an offset wood turning. Well, I've been waiting for just the right project, and I was in a thrift store just recently, and I think I may have come across exactly what I needed. This is a hammerhead. It's a ball ping hammerhead. And uh, I paid two dollars for it. And it says on here, Vintage Hammerhead. If it hadn't said Vintage on it, I probably could have got it for a dollar or a dollar fifty, which would have been all right. And um, it's old. It really is old. It's quite uh, uh, darkened and rusted, I guess. But uh, it should be cleaned up just fine. It's very much like this one here. This is a 12-inch, uh, <laughs> sorry, this is a 12-ounce Craftsman. And you, as you can tell, it hasn't gotten much use. Very good condition. But if you look at the hammer, the hammer handle, you'll notice that it's oval shaped on both ends. And so this entire wood turning was done with, uh, through offset wood turning. And so it's heavy here, not quite as heavy here. It's actually slim here, almost, almost straight actually. Thins down here at this neck and then very thin where it goes into the head. And if you look at that, it too is oval shaped. Remember, before you start any project, make sure you read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools and equipment. Woodworking is fun, but it's important to work safely. Let's get started. Here is the uh, hammer head that I purchased at the thrift store. And you can see it says vintage hammer head, $2. And I've cleaned it up a little bit, got some of the rust off it, ran it across the uh, wire wheel on my buffer, and that got rid of a lot of it. And I think it looks like it's in pretty good shape. No, really, looks like it hasn't gotten a whole lot of use, really. Okay. So what I've been doing is I've been doing some measurements, and um, these, what I did was I went ahead and just took my caliper, and I measured on this end, and that was uh, one and a half inches. And then I measured at each place that the uh, diameter changed, right about here. It went down to about, it went down to one and a quarter inches, about there. And it, it's continued one and a quarter to here. And then it tapered down. This is the narrowest part. It's like seven eighths of an inch. Here it flared out, and then it looks like it was shaved off, maybe sanded off or shaved off, and then uh, made oval shaped for the head. The uh, hammerhead here, as you can see, it is oval shaped, and one side is actually smaller than the other. So the uh, handle goes through the small side, it's split and then a wedge is driven in to keep it tight. So it has to pass through this side here. And this side here, according to my first measurement here, is about 7 sixteenths across. And then the length away here is about uh, almost 3 quarters of an inch. Now, um, in doing these things, I only measured in uh, imperial measurements, and I haven't done this in, in metric. I, I should. Maybe when I uh, get back to my diagrams, I'll, I'll do it in metric. This is the computer drawing of the hammer handle, and I've marked off the full length, which is about 12 and a half inches. I may, in the end, I may make it a little bit shorter, okay, because uh, lots of times I need a small one to get in into small spaces and since I already have a 12 and a half maybe the next one will be only 10 and a half. The hammerhead it's oval shaped at the top not a perfect oval so the corners are almost uh, close to square and on the back you can see the oval shape there and you can see the there is one pin there is one hole there where, where it was spun. <coughs> they probably have a jig of sort so they don't have to actually uh, use uh, <coughs> pilot holes. 
On this drawing I tried to explain to myself how this would be done. And on the first turning I would uh, just turn it round. It would be a cylinder and it would change diameters at these points along the way. Now to get the smooth round sides of it, of the oval, I'd have to offset it. So if I offset it an eighth of an inch and then turn and cut only the sides, not change the, the diameter of it, then I can get these uh, smooth sides. This is what it looks like as a cylinder and this is what it looks like after it's turned. But this is what it looks like as a cylinder, but this is what the sides will look like. Then I will offset it in the other direction and do the same thing, and that will give me the oval shape I'm looking for. Here I am at the wood lathe, and I've had a lot of questions about what kind of wood lathe do I turn on. And this is a Nova DVR XP. And I believe in Europe and some other countries it's also sold under the name uh, Record Power. But it's a variable speed, digitally controlled uh, wood light. And uh, works great for me, has very good torque, even at low speeds. This is a piece of wood that, I've, that I'm going to use. I thought I had some ash and I couldn't find it. But um, this is actually a part of my, my shop. I had to replace some wood on the outside. And this piece of wood is about 30 years old. So it's pretty well seasoned, I would say. I went ahead and, and found my centers on both ends. And I'm going to spin it just between centers. Okay. So I need to start marking my blank now. Now that I got it turned. So I need to mark off two inches because it's going to go from one and a half down to one and a quarter. Okay, the next one I need to mark off is the next four inches. Four inches here. And that's going to be the basic grip of the hammer. <coughs> it will be one and a quarter. After that, I need to mark off three inches. Three inches. It's going to taper down to the narrowest part, which is going to be about. Uh, seven eighths of an inch in diameter. Then it's going to flare out for the next uh, one and three quarter inches, one and three quarter inches, and then this will be the oval that will be for the hammerhead. And so that should be fine. is I'm going to turn this down to one and a quarter first. And I'm going to move my, uh, get my speed up. To 1000 RPM. Take off my ring. So let's see if I can get, if I can go ahead and use my, uh, use my skew chisel. And that needs to go about another eighth of an inch. All right. Well, that's what I think it needs. There's the one inch mark. I need to get to one and a quarter. That'll be about there. Yep. So I need to go down an eighth of an inch. good for now. And I'll go ahead and take it down the rest of the way. I'll start my taper to here 
flatten it out across there and then we'll start on that one. So it takes a short camper back here. There's the first one, and you can see the hole's gone. You can see the knot is still in there, and it's still a little large. I can go down a little bit more, but I don't really need to. From here, it tapers down to about uh, seven eighths of an inch. pretty narrow and I can take it down a little bit more some people don't like this but I'm going to Okay, so when these both sides get down to that, uh, where I cut with the skew, I mean cut with the uh, parting tool, then uh, we should be at the right depth, or the right diameter. So I want this, um, taper smoothly and over the full length of it while this one needs to be quite short. Okay, I've been doing all the turning with this tool. It's cutting quite well, so I'm going to stick with it. So here's my sample and should be matching up pretty good now. Not so bad. Okay, this end is much too thick. I need to extend the taper out a little bit. And I'm going to move this to about here. This is one and an eighth.
that should be three quarters of an inch. I tend to make everything a little bit oversized and then I'll get down to the proper size at the end when we finish. Alright, and I'm just going to give it a light sanding just to see how it looks. So that doesn't look too bad. It's the general shape of this one. So I'm gonna roll it up there. Uh -huh. This one's wider here, but uh, but the oval head is different on this one. It's much fatter. This should fit mine quite well. Now, the problem here now <laughs> is that this is round, it's cylindrical, like a cylinder, though it tapers in and out. What I need to do now is do the offset. And that means take a little bit off this side, take a little bit off that side. Now this, I think I went up, and that might be better. If I do it the other way, these will be on the outside edge. Doesn't matter, I really don't know. But, um, so what I'm going to do, if this is one and a half inches, so if that is one and a half inches, and I want it to be one and a quarter inches, that means I would take an eighth of an inch off each side. So that tells me that I should <clears throat> move this point over only an eighth of an inch. Maybe a little bit more so it doesn't uh, ruin that because uh, of the hole, the pilot hole. It's probably weak there. Okay, so if I want these up. Make a new hole right over here. A little more than an eighth away. And I'll make a new pilot hole on this side. I guess it can be more than an eighth. These have to be directly across from each other, so it looks like I'm off a little bit. Let's see if I can fix that a little bit. Well, that one looks better. And this one too needs to be over a little bit. These have to be off in the same direction. So these were at these points. 
So these would be the corresponding points over here. Now this is very large. So I'm going to have to move them to here. And to here. This is a learning experience, so we'll see what we get. So I'm going to go oh, almost let her down. So top hole. Top hole. Put some tension on that. Now I'm going to take my speed down to back to 500. Okay. And let's spin it and see what happens. Looks okay. Said I've never done offset turning, so this is new. So what I would do is I would uh, gently scrape by and see what it's, what it's doing. I think I, I think I can go faster. Six hundred. So I'm just feeling my way through there. I can feel when it's cutting, when it's not cutting. And uh, that looks like it did a did a job on there, isn't it? So it looks like a cylinder that way, and you can tell how much I took off. And um, I'm almost out to the outer edges. So I can, and so I feel my way through it. I can tell when it's cutting, when it's not cutting. It's uh, cutting quite roughly. So I went over it again one more time with a uh, sharpened chisel and moved very slowly. And that seems to have um, taken a lot of the rough cuts out of it. It's a lot smoother. It's not going to take much sanding to clean it up. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Take a little bit of sanding to clean it up, not a whole lot. And uh, this is 220, so it's not going to remove a whole lot. But you can see that it has taken the shape I was looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the other side. And I'll have to offset it the same way. So I'll take it off the, um, take the tension off. And I can probably do, do that, uh, moving that. And uh, now I'm going to use this hole and put it to the top. Yeah, yeah. And move this one to the top.
and that seems to have some good tension on it right now. Tighten that down. Make sure it moves freely. It does. I've turned the other side now and uh, I hope you can see that how narrow it is in, in this direction as opposed to that direction and that's how oval shaped it is. Uh, this side I have not this side is the one I just turned and I haven't sanded it at all but it seems to be quite quite good. I don't think this knot is of any importance since but my hand grip will probably be above it most of the time so I don't think that's going to affect anything and this is a, about the right shape up here I can uh, I'm going to start on this this part now and it looks like it is three quarters of an inch which I believe is the right size I need for the head, the hammer head. So I need about three quarters of an inch. Which is good. Mm -hmm. Which is very good. Three quarters of an inch. And this direction, well, it's about a half inch. Like about a half inch. So I'm going to go ahead and start turning on this one here. And uh, I'm going to use my shallow gouge and do a little bit here. But I may do this part with just my uh, parting tool and see how that goes. And still spinning at 750 RPM. <clears throat> Interesting. Looks like it, like it did well. Let me. I'm going to go ahead and move it back to the previous set of holes. And do the other side. It's like very close to the edge there. Should not have uh, done that. Hope it doesn't fly out of there. Looks like all I can do on it. Okay, any other sanding I can do um, by hand. But that's the shape I'm looking for. Right there. Good shape right here. I hope that works for you. Very good. So I'll do a little bit of sanding on that and then uh, we'll fit it to this hammerhead. Not too bad. Probably just need to, to trim on it a little bit, but it looks like it's going to be a good fit. Yeah. So what I've been doing is I've been fitting this on here and I hammer it in as best I can then take it off. Sometimes that requires a mallet. And that shows me where it's rubbing. 
and I can tell what has fitted in there and what hasn't. And it looks like it's still a little fat in here. And then with the rasp, I, I file this part to get rid of the little edge there. And that should bring it back, bring it into the shape of the, the hammerhead. And I always uh, position the hammerhead with the ball to the left. And then I keep track of this little this little circle here, and that is the uh, so it's always facing the same way. And once it's fit in there, I don't sand there anymore. Don't remove any wood. I hope you can see that I can uh, easily drive it in to within about uh, three eighths of an inch from the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my uh, get my hacksaw. We'll put it in the vise, and I'll go ahead and uh, cut a slot in there. And I'm only gonna cut it about a, a little bit over a half inch deep. But I have my handle all sanded now, and uh, it wasn't very difficult to get the to sand it smooth. This side came out pretty good. Most of the, the tool marks are gone. And I've finished shaping the end of this pretty good. And uh, again, this is uh, old wood. It's very well seasoned. It must be about 30 years old. And it's, this may not be the permanent handle for this hammer. Uh, I'll probably uh, get something better. I wanted to use ash, and of course if I could get hickory, that would be great. So I got this all sanded pretty good. Got the slot cut in it, and I used just a, a hacksaw blade. And it's only about a half inch deep. I don't want it to go all the way down to here. <coughs> it would weaken it way too much. Okay, so it should fit like this. And hey, that fits right down in there. Okay. And I have a little wedge, a little yellow pine wedge. And that should just fit in there. not so bad. Feels good. Um, cut off the excess. Later I may, I may you know, fix it up better or I'm re maybe replace the entire the entire um, handle with some better material. So with a little bit of sanding, that should be good, or I can take a rasp, file a rasp, and file that smooth. Here's my, here's my finished hammer. It's pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, it's got that oval shape that I was looking for. I sanded it a little bit. I need to sand it a little bit more. Then I'll give it a coat of uh, maybe just linseed oil or uh, a quick coat of varnish. So if you've enjoyed this video, click on like. If you're not a member of YouTube, uh, sign up for an account. It's quick and easy. If you'd like to see more of my videos, click on subscribe and you'll be notified of each uh, video as it becomes available. Thank you for watching and uh, take care.